what's up everyone, Game Dad here, coming at you guys with a different kind of video than I'm used to doing on the channel, and that is a collaboration video with some fellow YouTubers that I've been interacting with over the past few months, and we've been giving each other feedback and ideas and things like that, so we decided, hey, why not do a collaboration video? So today we are all going to be taking a look at the various Disney Duck games that have come out over the years, starting way back in the 80s, all the way up through more modern times with a bunch of different games. I mean, we're going to be kicking it off with DuckTales and ending kind of around the remastered version of DuckTales that's come out within the past couple of years. Now, you're going to see a few different faces in this video, but the main guy that is doing this collaboration with me is Jay Malone over at Square Pigs. So if you guys get the chance, definitely go check out his channel. He has some awesome content on there. And everyone's channel info will be down in the description below, and you'll also see info popping up on the screen every now and then. Now, before we dive into this video, please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as that little notification bell so you can alert every time I get a new video coming out. Now, we're going to start this video by taking a look at DuckTales on the NES. Take it away, Jay. Hi guys, uh, quick introduction, my name is Jay. I'm from the channel Square Pegs. If you're not familiar with us, me, my wife, and my son, we talk about games that we like, toys we collect, uh, board games we roll dice on, and books that we read. Really, anything that kind of tickles our fancy that we're into, we're happy to talk about it. Uh, Chris asked me to be here today after we've been working together on some video production classes, uh, and uh, we both share a passion for the Disney Duck games. So uh, let's dive on in. I mean, this is, this is kind of the big deal one right here, right? This is the one that started it all. Uh, if you haven't played DuckTales before, I'm kind of surprised. I'd like to meet you. That's bizarre to me because everyone I know has played it that considers themselves a gamer. Uh, I remember renting this uh, almost every weekend for a summer uh, from a little video store in Westport, Massachusetts that my mom and I used to go to. Uh, and I just fell in love with the game. I was never able to beat it as a kid. I didn't beat it till I was an adult. But I still loved and still love the game. It's one of those rare games from the NES era that really holds up. Uh, I personally adore this. This is my original copy. You can see it's beat up beyond measure. Uh, it's torn up stickers on the on the packaging. It's 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 an old game, but I still love it. You know, we don't get to any of the other games on this list without first talking about the one that released in 1989, and that's DuckTales from Capcom. This is kind of the granddaddy of them all. This is one of the best side-scrolling platformers released for the NES. It uh, stars Uncle Scrooge. Uh, it was created by the Mega Man team, so you know the controls and the games are going to and the gameplay is going to be tight. Uh, and it just it's wonderful. This is a game I've revisited consistently throughout my life, and it is something I truly love. DuckTales for the NES is one of the top ten games released for that console. All right, so first up, we are taking a look at DuckTales, the one that started it all for the NES, and. This game is phenomenal. If you owned an NES growing up, or maybe you've gotten into retro collecting, things like that, this, if you haven't played it, it's fairly easy to find, it's fairly inexpensive, and it is a fantastic game. Go through the levels, the sound design, level design, characters, the story. The game is so immersive and so much fun. It's just a blast to play. You know, a lot of the times when people think of Capcom, they think games like Mega Man, stuff like that. But honestly, to me, a game like DuckTales just sticks out way more. It was so faithful to the TV show with its just overall style, its kind of quirky behaviors and things like that. And it's just a super fun time to be able to go through and play this game, even to this day, nearly 30 years later. Man, what can I say about the Lucky Dime Caper? Uh, I was introduced to the Lucky Dime Caper via my friend Pete, uh, who had a Sega Master System, which was alien to me, because I'd only ever had an NES at the time. Uh, and hearing about the Sega Master System uh, before I really knew about the Genesis blew my mind. There were other video game options beyond Nintendo and Atari. What is Sega? Tell me all about it. And he had Lucky Dime Caper, uh, as well as another game we're going to talk about here in a couple minutes. Uh, this is a really solid game, and this was something I had played after I'd played DuckTales, so I was a little bit biased, but I look at it now as an adult through, you know, with the eyes of nostalgia kind of cleared up a little bit, and I realized how great of a game it was. Released in 1991 and published by Sega, The Lucky Dime Caper starring Donald Duck is wonderful. It is a really kind of a showcase of how powerful the Master System was. If you look at the graphics on this game, and the color palette and the animations that the game presented, it's second to none. It's so much stronger looking than stuff that was released on the NES, and it sounds so much better with the music. I love 
The Lucky Dime Caper. It's a great game. Alright, and up next we have Quackshot starring Donald Duck for the Sega Genesis. Now, this game, looks-wise, it's beautiful. It's got all that deep, like, super rich 16-bit color. And the sound overall, it's got some nice tones, some complexities to it. But over time, I gotta admit, I was kind of getting annoyed at hearing the soundtrack, which is different from a lot of these other Duck games. I think what really draws me into this game in particular, though, other than the graphics and stuff like that, and not even so much the gameplay, is more of just the wackiness behind it. In the game, I mean, you know, you have weapons, but I mean, the main weapon that you use is something that shoots plungers at people and stuns them. I don't know if they are stunned because they're like, what the heck, a duck just shot me with a plunger, or if they've just been stunned by magical plunger powers. But either way, it's still a fun mechanic, and instead of just using it as something to go through and stun enemies or anything like that, you actually can use it to pause moving blocks, that way you can get up to new areas and find different places within the levels. And there's just a lot of quirky things like that. There is a sub-menu system so that you can go in and you can actually switch between different weapons and stuff like that. And there are some different things like being able to control Donald's temper. If you ever watched any of the cartoons growing up, you know that that duck can get super pissed off sometimes. And that's taken into account within Quackshot. Now overall, is this my favorite duck game out of all the ones that there are or the ones that I even have personally? Absolutely not. I'll say that the gameplay it's good, it's a fun little platformer. You can get through the game in probably about an hour or so. So, you know, it's of relative length for the time period. But one thing I really don't like in it is the kind of like moon gravity that the jumping has. I don't know, it feels really slow compared to other games, especially any of the other Disney Duck games where everything is a little more up-tempo, a little more fast-paced. I will say though, it's super fun to play as Donald when he gets irritated. Now, next up on the list for me to talk about is Darkwing Duck for the NES. Now, I've got to be honest, I didn't actually have this game as a kid. I picked it up later as an adult when I started going back collecting old NES games and stuff. And what really caught my eye about the game was I remember watching the cartoon when I was a kid. I always loved watching, you know, The Scourge in the Night, Darkwing Duck. And it was cool because it kind of crossed over different characters from other Disney shows that I watched as a kid. Now, just like DuckTales, this is actually one that's a Disney licensed game, but it was made by Capcom. So it comes with that awesome music, just like the other games, and it just has some awesome platforming action. Now, this game gives serious Mega Man vibes. Whereas with DuckTales, you know, it's more of an adventure game, side-scrolling adventure. This one is definitely a, you know, take out the baddies and reach the end of the stage kind of game. And honestly, in some parts, it even looks like they kind of recycled some animations just with a different character skin on it. But even with that kind of recycling of content, it's still a super fun game to play. The graphics are phenomenal. I really enjoy the soundtrack for the game. And there is actually a really cool mechanic in it that you won't find in a thing like Mega Man. And that is kind of being able to hook onto objects. That way you can climb up, you can hang from things as they move, you can jump up and pull levers. You can do all kinds of new things with this one simple mechanic. And it totally changes the gameplay experience. So if you were a fan of Donald Duck, if you were a fan of DuckTales, if you were a fan of Tailspin, or if you were a fan of any of those other Disney cartoons from back in the day, you'll probably enjoy playing this game. It'll be a really fun walk down memory lane for you. All right, so next up on the list is DuckTales 2. All right, so DuckTales 2. Let's see here. Uh, Adventure Island, Blaster Master. Let's see, we got Donkey Kong. Oh, here we go. Duck Hunt, DuckTales. Wait a minute. Where's my DuckTales 2? Oh, wait, I remember why I don't have this game. I can't afford it. Jay, what about you? Oh, man. DuckTales 2. Yeah. No, dude. I got a kid. I can't afford that game. Yep. I can understand that. Hey, you know what? Actually, I think John over at Biddy Kong's Quest, I think he might have a copy. Hey, John, do you have DuckTales 2?
All right, so this is DuckTales 2. Uh, it's probably one of the rarest NES games out there, uh, made by Capcom in 1993, which was at the end of the NES's life cycle, so it was that time when, you know, Little Samson was released and Wacky Races, and a bunch of those other ones that uh, tend to go for, you know, $200, $300 on eBay. Um, I did not pay that. This is my childhood copy. Uh, I think that I picked it up at, for like 10 bucks at Kmart. Uh, this one is, is really more of the same. If you like the first DuckTales, you're gonna like this one. Uh, Gameplay-wise, it's almost the exact same. Um, at you know, at least at, at its core other than the fact that Scrooge can actually get upgrades for his cane that let him do different things um, And also you can go back into levels uh, after you you um, after you clear them uh, In case you missed anything which is pretty cool because in the other one you couldn't do that uh, And also there are a bunch of secrets in those levels that you can only access after you get certain cane abilities uh, So it's kind of like a little bit of a metroidvania um, a little bit more than the first one was anyway, so that's pretty cool. Um, now, graphics-wise, it's like the exact same. Scrooge looks the exact same. All, uh, you know, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, Launchpad, they all look the exact same. Lastly, the sound, though, uh, you know, I think the original DuckTales has um, this really iconic soundtrack, especially uh, the moon theme. I mean, everybody knows the moon theme, right? Or the Transylvania theme. That's also another really popular one, really uh, stuck out to me as a kid. Um, I'm not sure that I would say that the music in DuckTales 2 is quite as memorable as that. But that said, it's actually still really good. And so here's actually the theme for the waterfall stage. Which is a pretty good, like, water-based theme. Very Capcom sounding. Not a whole lot this different from other Capcom games that you'd find, but still pretty good. And that's about it for my quick review of DuckTales 2. So back over to Chris and Jay for the rest of the video. Hey, John, thanks for that awesome review of DuckTales 2 for us. Oh, and uh, by the way, it's nothing to be ashamed of, bro. All right, now we're gonna hit the next game, which is Deep Duck Trouble. And Jay, you got this one. I played Deep Duck Trouble at uh, that same friend Pete's house. Uh, he had this and Lucky Dime Caper. And Deep Duck Trouble is, well, it's fine, uh, but that's about as far as I can go with it. It's, it's not as ambitious as Lucky Dime Caper or as good as DuckTales. Uh, it's one of those games where it's like, okay, this, is, this feels like something that was just produced you know it was something that was made with the donald license and because they had to not necessarily because they wanted to it didn't ha it doesn't have any soul to it. in 1993 sega released deep duck trouble starring donald duck on the master system and again on the game gear this game is not as strong as the lucky dime caper there's there's definitely some stuff in here that just uh, doesn't work it, it's a little bit wonkier control wise the combat is not as polished as it is in the lucky dime caper it's still a fine game but the earlier game is significantly better and later games that come after it are significantly better so for me maui mallard is an interesting memory uh i i i'm i like the game but it's not like it's not like a ducktales oh my god moment for me it's 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 something i remember fondly looking at it going it looks really good uh, and it animates really well, but that's about as much as I remember about the game. But the memory I have of acquiring the game is pretty special. Uh, there was a video store in North Fort Myers, Florida I lived at that was clearancing all their Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis games for like two bucks a pop. Um, and I walked in there with a good hundred dollars and walked out with a good 50 games. Uh, stuff like Super Metroid and Link to the Past and Kendo Rage and Maui Mallard. <laughs> Uh, and like every Fatal Fury game you could possibly imagine, uh, I walked out with because I loved these games so much and it was such a great opportunity to increase my collection and to have some really hard to find games. Uh, I, I, that was one of my favorite memories and something I treasure to this day and, and still I weigh experiences of buying used games to that because it was such a great memory and such a great experience for me. All right, here's a bit of an obscure one. Uh, released in 1997 and published by Disney Interactive Studios, Maui Mallard in Cold Shadow is a Donald Duck starring game that has Donald playing different roles. This one almost feels like this was kind of Disney's answer to Earthworm Jim. It's got kind of the loose controls that Earthworm Jim has. Donald kind of flows around when he jumps instead of having a natural arc like in other platformers. Uh, and there's, you know, there's the gunplay like there is in Earthworm Jim too. So it feels a little bit similar to that. It's a good game. Uh, it's definitely different than anything you've played before. As you can see here, the animations are spectacular in this game. Uh, yeah, you can definitely, I would, I would suggest looking at Maui Mallard and Cold Shadow. So a few years ago, the wife and I were having some financial trouble. And one of the things that had to go was the Dreamcast collection in order to keep us afloat. And that's fine. 
Doesn't bother me at all. Half the fun of collecting is the chase, the thrill of the hunt. So tracking down games again has been a blast. I didn't discover this game until well after that collection was gone and I've started rebuilding. And it was told to me by a friend that I should really check it out since I'm such a huge Disney fan. I didn't know much about it. He told me it was like Crash Bandicoot but with Donald. And despite my misgivings, I decided to give it a shot and I'm so happy I did. All right, this one popped out in 2000 and was published by Ubisoft. This is Donald Duck and Going Quackers. This released on, like, everything. Uh, if you had a console in the year 2000, it released on it. Uh, this version here is for the Dreamcast. Uh, and this is kind of Disney's answer to Crash Bandicoot. It plays a lot like Crash Bandicoot games. Uh, I, I think it's a little bit tighter than the Crash Bandicoot games. The controls feel, feel better to me. Uh, although, admittedly, I'm not a huge Crash fan, so I can't really say much there. Uh, there are 3D uh, levels and 2D side-scrolling levels, and there's tons of unlockables in the game. It's it's pretty neat. I do like Donald Duck and Going Quackers. All right, putting a nice little bookend on this, we have a game that was released in 2013, developed by WayForward, published by Capcom, and that is DuckTales Remastered. Now, this is a remake of the original that we kicked off this entire video with, and what better way to close it out than with a remake of the best. This takes the DNA of the Capcom original and puts a WayForward coat of paint on it, makes everything look gorgeous, sound gorgeous, and present gorgeously. Uh, and one of the really neat trivia pieces here is that this was actually Alan Young's final performance as Scrooge McDuck before he passed away in 2016. Um, this is a wonderful game and well worth tracking down if you can. You boys need to learn some respect for the final things in life. Now, if you're done having fun at your old uncle's expense, help me decide where we should go next. My favorite memory of DuckTales Remastered might be different than most people. I mentioned it in the video about Alan Young's final performance, and as a voice actor, that's a big deal to me. Because for him to portray the role of Scrooge McDuck for decades, and for his final performance to be in his signature role in a video game of all things, that was a big deal. And he never missed a step. The soul of Scrooge is still there. The voice is a little bit weaker, of course. I mean, he was in his 90s when he passed, but such an amazing, amazing performance. Now, we thought it might be kind of fun to hit up some of our friends and see what their favorite Disney Duck game memories were. Now, there might be some unfamiliar faces and there might be some familiar faces that you guys have seen around YouTube, but we're gonna start this off with my personal favorite memory of a Disney Duck game, and then you guys are gonna hear from Jay and some of our friends. Now, one of my favorite memories with one of the Disney Duck games is actually with DuckTales. And a lot of people probably have the same kind of view because it was such an awesome game growing up. However, it's not so much with DuckTales for NES, it's actually DuckTales Remastered, and more specifically, the one on the Wii U. Now, my best friend and I growing up, we used to play all the different Capcom games, especially Mega Man games, and also the DuckTales games. And over the years, you know, we developed different tastes and things like that. We got into different kinds of games and stuff. But then whenever this one came out, we both just immediately were stoked about it and had to pick it up, and we spent hours playing this game and it was just so much fun it was such a good time it was a huge trip down memory lane and it was just such a unique way to play the game if you're playing it on ps3 or 360 anything like that you know you'll have a typical gaming experience you have your controller and you play through it but i mean with the wii u you also have the game pad it gives you just that little bit of extra stuff to go with it and I don't know, it felt more at home playing DuckTales on a Nintendo console. And it was awesome. So, I mean, that's why I gotta say, my personal favorite Disney Duck memory is playing DuckTales Remastered on the Wii U. DuckTales is the granddaddy of them all. For me, my personal favorite is DuckTales Remastered. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. I, I, as much as I adore the original, and as much as I appreciate the original work that Capcom did, it is really hard for me to look at a game that is developed by WayForward and published by Capcom and not just get stars in my eyes. WayForward is my favorite independent developer. I love the work they do. I have enjoyed pretty much every game that they've made from Shantae to Batman Brave and the Bold to The Flash on Game Boy Advance. I love WayForward's work. So to get them to remaster one of my favorite games from childhood was a big deal. I wasn't going to pass this up. And it is something that paid off in spades. And to know that we have Alan Young's last performance of Scrooge McDuck 
and we have all the classic characters returning to their roles from the animated series just meant the world to me. It's a wonderful, wonderful game, and is truly something I treasure and love to this day. DuckTales, woo! The Immortal John Hancock here, and I have some great memories of playing DuckTales back in the day. I had vivid memories of going to my friend's house, and he rented the game, and we would stay up and play it and hand the controller back and forth to get through each level until we beat it. That's how we did it back in the day. No, we didn't buy it. We rented it over and over again. Probably could have bought it with how much money we spent. Anyways, great memories of DuckTales. Woo! So my favorite memory with a duck game actually has to do more with the DuckTales TV show than the actual game itself. If you couldn't tell, I'm a big DuckTales fan. Um, and as you know, the video game that we know uh, was created because uh, there was a TV show before it. Now, that was great. I used to watch the TV show every day uh, coming home. I was a huge DuckTales fan. That's why I picked up DuckTales 2 when I did. All that stuff. But most of you guys probably know they actually did a reboot of DuckTales uh, fairly recently here in the last couple of years. And I got to experience a really cool moment while watching that with my kids um, where they actually used the, uh, the moon theme uh, from the first DuckTales game as a song and actually a pretty big part of, uh, of, of the series. And it was a really cool thing to me because, uh, you know, it's, it makes it really clear that, that people that grew up with DuckTales that remember the games that we play, um, they are making the show. It's a labor of love for them. That was a really cool memory for me because I got to share that with my kids. Um, and it was something that was really, um, you know, influential to me as a kid, this video game, this series. Uh, and it's really cool that a video game or a, a video game that was inspired by a series then went on to re to re-inspire the reboot of the series that inspired it. So I, it was a really cool moment. That's probably my favorite, uh, you know, Disney duck game memory. And on to the next person. Hey folks, Stu here from Stu's Game Reviews, and my favorite memory from a Disney Duck game has definitely got to be related to Donald Duck's Playground. Okay, not really. Um, and this is a cool game, I, and I like Al Lowe for putting it together, but it has to be DuckTales, right, for the NES. Like, everyone loves DuckTales, but I figured everyone was going to say that, so I, I slightly changed it a little bit. I'm going to mention the remastered DuckTales, My Way Forward, for consoles and the PC. And this is the PC version, which is only released in physical form in Europe, not in America. It's Steam DRM, unfortunately, but you know you can get around that, and uh, it's all the disc. It's not, not no download required or anything like that. This game is awesome. If you love the original DuckTales game, you will love the remastered game. Way Forward is a lot of great stuff, but they have your all the original voice actors in the TV show. They have added scenes. They have added gameplay, changed gameplay, upgraded graphics, upgraded sound. It's just an awesome game, so check this out if you get a chance. And my memory, I'd have to say, would just be putting this in for the first time and playing it a little bit with my son. Uh, the intro sequence with the Beagle Boys trying to rob the rob the money bin and then going to the Amazon and playing the rest of the game. Great game. Check it out. Now, Jay and I have had a lot of fun putting this video together over the past few weeks and getting to talk to a bunch of our friends and fellow YouTubers about what their favorite Disney Duck memories were. And it's just been a blast to be able to put this video together for you guys. And I want to give a big shout out to Jay Malone over at Square Pegs and just say thanks for doing this video with me, man. This has been a blast and I can't wait to do another one in the future. And also a big thank you to John over at Baby Kong's Quest for helping us out with that DuckTales 2 review. He's got an awesome channel. Be sure to go check it out. And for everyone else that was willing to share one of their memories in this video, like Stu over at Stu's Reviews, the immortal John Hancock, thank y'all so much for being a part of this video with Jay and I. Now, if any of you watching are interested in checking out any of their channels, I'll have everything linked down in the description below. And while you're down there, please let us know in the comments what you thought about today's video. What is your favorite Disney Duck video game memory? And while you're all down there, please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as that little notification bell so you can alert every time I got a new video coming out. And I encourage you all to go check out everyone else's channels as well, and give them a sub while you're there. Now, as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later.